Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 50 I think or round yeah sorry round 15 even of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory. I'm even struggling now to keep up with what number of this series we're on for the second upload of the day. Obviously if you did miss out on the Italian Grand Prix earlier on today I would highly highly recommend going back and checking that out. You know it was quite a de good decent race as well as the Belgian Grand Prix yesterday as well you know those two really really good. In terms of this weekend though, we've got two more parts on the car we've got the drag and the front downforce there. And you know, a huge, huge thank you before we move into this Grand Prix weekend for the amount of support on the channel. Now, from now on, these videos are going to be sort of like recorded two, three days in advance. So I actually don't know, you know, if I've hit a certain milestone or anything. For all I know, by now, I could have lost all 8,500 of my subscribers and I'm back to zero views and everything like that. But hopefully, hopefully not on the whole. But let's move on then into free practice here at the Singapore Grand Prix. Welcome to the Marina Bay circuit in the heart of Singapore. The rain is falling for the start of today's practice session, making life much more difficult for the teams than they may have anticipated. Now I'd like to tell you it's bright and sunny and we're enjoying some lovely warm weather for free practice today. But unfortunately, Anthony Davidson, someone's got the weather gods in an angry mood and I think it's going to be a damp one. Well, don't look at me, Crofty. I was hoping for a dry session like everyone else, especially the engineers down in the pit lane. They'll be the ones with the biggest concerns, as a lot of the answers they're looking for in terms of car setup and aero balance will now have to wait until it's dry. From a driver's point of view, there's a big responsibility when driving in these conditions during a pre-practice session, as there's very little to gain, but a lot to lose, especially if you lose control of the car and end up damaging it. And if that does happen, it can put you on the back foot for the remainder of the weekend. So here we are then at Singapore, then we're going to jump straight in to our track climatization lap. They're actually a slightly damp circuit for this one, but we do still claim the purple score there, so quite happy overall with that. And unfortunately, yeah, with it being mixed conditions, that means that pretty much all the other programs, unfortunately, meant that, you know, it was one of those ones where if you went out on the dries, it was far too slow, and if you went out on the inters, well, the AI just were absolutely OP there. So frustrating that that's the way it is, but we did still pick up near enough 200 R&D points there. Takes us up now to 600 and 99, which will mean we will be able to get a new upgrade on the car. It's starting to get a little bit later on in the season, though, so I'm starting to think about, you know, whether we do want to start banking R&D points for the 20, well, I see the 2019 season as such, season two of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to think about that a little bit more over the coming weeks. In terms of an upgrade, though, we are going to try and get one on the car if we potentially can there, and I think the front wing does look like a potentially good option there. I have considered, you know, really start to try and invest in the engine i'm starting to you know struggle for the balance between all you know all of the upgrades on the car but we are actually going to roll with a complete engine overhaul moving into the singapore grand prix you know just want to be good on the pace once more so we are going to completely skip over qualifying obviously there is no point uh ruining the engine in any way in qualifying we will be starting right from the very back of the grid or once more there obviously a little bit uh, you know, a little bit disappointing, obviously, the fact we can't do qualifying, but I wasn't expecting too much around here anyway. And really, it's just going to be damage limitation here in Singapore. As the sun sets over the South China Sea, the sport that never sleeps is alert and raring to go. Welcome, under the bright lights of the Marina Bay circuit, to another Singapore Grand Prix. It's a very long, very physical lap, this one, and really there's not much in the way of margin for error. So we have a bit of an endurance race for you tonight. It's a 3.1 mile lap here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit with 47% taken at full throttle. It's hot, humid, and bumpy around the 13 lefts of the 10 rights of mostly slow corners. But we should see speeds of up to 200 miles per hour along the Raffles Boulevard. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk briefly about Max Verstappen. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromised start. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position today, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Vettel, Valtteri Bottas, and Magnussen. 
Hulkenberg, Grosjean, Alonso, and Max Verstappen. Leclerc, Sainz, Esteban Ocon, and Stroll, Van Dorn, Ericsson, Pierre Gasly, and Brendan Hartley, Perez, and the Professor. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. So here we are then on the grid, ready for the Singapore Grand Prix. Obviously, as I said, starting right at the very back of the field with a completely fresh engine strapped to the back of this car. Hoping, you know, we can have quite a decent showing out today. But, you know, we'll wait and see as to what does happen with that. Singapore, not a track I'm a fan of. And then also not a track that I expect this car to do very well at. But it's five lights here on the grid, ready for the Singapore Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go there. Off to a, well, abysmal start. I'm going to be completely honest with you. You see Sergio Perez alongside me, well, the same Mercedes power unit in the back of that car. It's a much better launch for me, but he is on a much softer compounded tyres. I think we're pretty much the only driver actually starting on a set of the soft compound here as we come through the first couple of corners. So keep it overall nice and tidy and clean as we come down, down this long, long, well, I say long, long back straight. It's the longest straight you get around here at the Singapore Grand Prix. Speeds of about 190 miles an hour, obviously in the slipstream with the DRS and everything. I like that as well as we almost think about going for a move up the inside of Sergio there. Just getting a little bit worried he'd broken a little bit too early. Now I speak about that in well, the next corner. He does exactly that though. So we try and get up the inside there. He's going to be on the outside. A little bit of contact actually as he tries to cut across me. Obviously the game thinks that's my fault. I'm not too sure you know what else I could have done about that one there. But yeah, Sergio will hold on to P19 for now as we come through the next couple of corners. We've got Gasly and Ericsson holding us both up though as we come out down over the bridge here towards the well towards the midway stage of this lap just trying to wrestle for any sort of space around this circuit at the moment now out of the head it's going to be a huge amount of wheel spin there but we do get the power down in at the end and we are going to drop back a little bit away from these couple of cars just ahead of us there Ericsson and Gasly still side by side just up the road there and unfortunately for Ericsson no idea what has happened to him there but he has ended up in the wall the wrong way around he is out of the Grand Prix as well. I think Gasly squeezed him up to the wall. He got span around and just lost the wheel in the contact VSC there. If I think Sergio actually got a little bit of damage from that as well. But the VSC has been deployed, still waiting for our first safety car of this season. There, It's been quite an impressive run of safety over the course of the F1 2018 season. So far, I think I've only actually seen Tom Knight 7HD get a safety car on this game, which is quite surprising at the time of recording this there. But yeah, safety car. Obviously, the virtual safety car even did come in quite soon after that so we will return to green flag racing see we're a little bit away from the cars just up the road here so we'll be certainly trying to look towards the long-term run of this race now a lot of guys probably going to be two potentially even three stopping depending on how their race strategy goes so you know we on the one stop just looking to try and capitalize on that it's certainly just going to be a race of longevity here you know singapore one of the longest races in terms of the f1 calendar as well once we come to the end of lap two though the AI are all starting to pick, which I think was a little bit odd. They're clearly the Hypersoft really not able to go very far in this Grand Prix. You can see we're now up to P9 of this Grand Prix here. So very, you know, a weird strategy from the AI. They can see all coming out of the first, well, out of the pit lane there. So we have got a good sort of 10 second lead over those guys there. But Hamilton is on the on the Hypersofts once again there. So if they can only sort of do four or five laps, obviously, including their qualifier runs, that is really really not the tart I'd want to be going on here so we'll certainly try to capitalise on that over the course of this Grand Prix as we come through the first couple of corners here. Start to lose base a little bit from Gasly just at the road but the cars are starting to get a little bit more congested once again as we move on to the end of lap 4 then. We've got Hamilton starting to close into the rear of me here. We're not really going to be able to hold him up too much in this race obviously as well. You know we're, you know, we're not technically a Mercedes B team but obviously we've got quite an affiliation with Mercedes in this crewman as well, so I'm not too sure. You know, we're probably not going to do ourselves any favours by holding him up in this Grand Prix either as we come through the next couple of corners here. Trying to close at the back of Pierre Gasly here, but he's not able to get close enough just yet, which is a little bit frustrating at the moment. Just the straight line speed in this car. Even with a fresh engine, we tried to run quite high aero to be good through the twisty bits, but unfortunately just wasn't helping out. But we are going to send it down the inside of Pierre Gasly there. Unfortunately, get caught out on the curves and a bit attached to the Toro Rosso about there. I mean, so unfortunately, we do squeeze back into the wall ever so slightly, but we now move up into P8 of the Grand Prix here. So we are still moving our way slowly and surely through the order there as we now try to look to get to the back of Stoffel Van Dorn here in the McLaren car. You see on the mini-map, Fernando Alonso has actually got a, well, a good sort of 10-second race lead here, which I didn't think we'd ever expect to say in Formula 1. Obviously now 
considering he has announced his retirement as well. But coming through the final couple of corners then, just a couple of laps later, well, Hamilton was just not able... I don't know, he's actually pit again, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there, well, he was, he was either pit again or he will be pitting again very, very shortly there, which is very, very odd there. Gasly actually dives into the pits, and there we go. Yeah, Lewis has actually dived into the pit lane there once again as well as Fernando Alonso there. So the AI really trying to go for almost a two or potentially even a three-stop Grand Prix here. Ignore that line through the first couple of corners there. I was trying to look at the AI as well as what, you know, ERS mode I was going with there and Vulcan really lost sight of where the white lines were around the circuit. But hang on to the back straight there once again, kicking at the back end, the rear end. Still very, very loose in this Williams car that we got. I think that's Hartley trying to look up the inside of oh, Carlos Sainz there. Sainz got a bit damaged and no idea what Van Dorn has done. If you can have a look on the minimap, I'm not too sure if he had a bit of an issue with the car or what there. But yeah, he just pulls off to the side of the road after a little bit of contact with us and he's now just sat on the start of Sector 2 there. So really no idea what he is doing there. But yeah, that moves us now up into P6 of this Grand Prix. So we've gone last to sixth in seven laps here at the Singapore Grand Prix, which I will certainly take here. Sight's looking really, really unsettled on that old compound of tyres there. So we're going to send it down the inside of a very, very poor dive bomb by myself. But we do get the traction on the exit of the corner. As I said, the Renault really, really struggling for grip at this stage of the race. Here. He has gone quite far on that set of the Hypersoft tyres there, so it looks like it's not going to be a tyre that you want to use in this Grand Prix as well as now closing it to the back of Brendan Hartley there. But through the final couple of corners, he is actually going to dive into the pits on the end of lap 7 here, which moves us now up into P4 of this Grand Prix. So it is certainly going very, very well for ourselves. Charles Leclerc now leads the way, I think, well, I would, I would imagine so for the first time ever in his Formula 1 career. He will lead a lap here at the Singapore Grand Prix there. Yeah, on to the end of lap 9, though. Well, Fernando Alonso is now all back over the rear of me here. So he was technically in the net lead of this Grand Prix, if I'm not mistaken. You know, so fantastic job so far by McLaren You know, with that car. I did accidentally call it a McLaren Honda. I think it was at the German Grand Prix a couple of days back, so I must only apologise for that. I'll try to make sure I don't do that again. But yeah, Fernando all over the back of me here as we come out onto lap 10 of this Grand Prix. A third of the way through this race there. Fernando to the inside. We're going to squeeze him a little bit to the inside there, but he will be able to get that move done. Parks it wonderfully on the apex there. We try to have a sniff up the inside in towards turn three that we're just not able to make anything work as of there so we're now back down to p5 of this grand prix here so still running quite well on the whole but unfortunately you can see just the pace on the softs although they could probably last pretty much the entirety of this grand prix they obviously just had no match for the hyper or the ultra softs in this grand prix so one lap later on to lap 11 here we've now got sebastian vettel all over the back of me here as we come out of the first couple of corners here. Is he going to be able to try and size a move down this back DRS straight there? We don't get the best run out onto the back straight here. And well, Sev, he's certainly going to try and capitalise on this. Does not want to get held up behind me as little as possible there. He's going to send it down the inside. We're going to give him the move on the inside. On the exit of the corner, though. And well... We've completely dropped... We've, we've clicked restart as well. I cannot believe we've we actually just gone and done that. What's that? Two days in a row now? We've retired from a Grand Prix this season there. I can't actually believe I've clicked restart as well, which unfortunately is going to completely mess up the race results as well then. But yeah, that was heartbreaking once again there. You know, that race was actually looking really, really strong. Like, we could go for quite a surprise result there in the end. I sort of had a bit of a look through the order and what the AI were on. And, well, I think it was probably going to be, you know, potentially a top 10 finish there in the Singapore Grand Prix there. So that was absolutely gutted. And as I said, I can't believe I clicked restart there as well. So that's going to completely change up the race results in the end there. But there we are then. That, unfortunately, was the Singapore Grand Prix. Never really got to have a look on the rewinds there to see what happened. I think, yeah, just in fourth gear, I dropped it on the exit. Right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, I'd, I'd say it's just raw pace, plain and simple. I mean, we could sit here and talk about strategy all day, the overtaking, looking after the tyres, but at the end of it all, if you want to win, you need a package that's got the speed over everyone else, and that's exactly what they had today. And I can see now the drivers are making their way out. We need Red Bull fighting at the front. They do an incredible amount for Formula One, and that's another winner's trophy heading back to Milton Keynes.
So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It's a good result for Sebastian Vettel, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Let's give it to Sergio Perez. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. And now let's take a look at the constructors' standings. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time, though, goodbye. So, yeah, as I said, I think, yeah, unfortunately, we just dropped it on the exit of, well, so the start of Sector 2 there. I don't think, I think it was just where, obviously, we didn't want to hit Seb as well there. You know, made the mistake, took the spin ourselves, which actually means, though, a Red Bull 1-2, Lewis in third, Seb now two races in a row, not on the podium there. So, well, is he not going to be able to get a podium between now and the end of the season? I would highly... Highly doubt that there. I think it was uh, Kimi Raikkonen in 5th, Bottas in 6th there. With Alonso 7th, Perez in 8th, Sainz in 9th, Roman Grosjean in 10th there with his teammate Magnussen just missing out there. But yeah, obviously I did retire straight away there because, well, as I said, you know, if we crash, we crash in this career mode. I can confirm though, these next few episodes I've, I've, I've recorded up now to about, I think it was Russia, or even, sorry, even later than that even, I think it was about Mexico. Uh, but we don't crash in any of those races, so hopefully between now and the end, of the season. We will be surviving pretty much every race. Alonso jumps Perez though. That was sort of the only real talking point from that Grand Prix there as well. But hopefully, well I would say you guys have enjoyed this video and you know, hopefully you still have, you know, been able to have a look at the Singapore Grand Prix as well. Russia though, I will say now we do bring exciting news to this promo. Quite a big revelation as well. So hopefully you know you are looking forward to that. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new around here as well and you don't want to miss any content on this channel. Click the bell icon as well as we all know what sub boxes can be like. But I will see you guys next time for the Russian Grand Prix.